I'm moving inshallah to the slide on the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Uh, this is the six years of Hijra. Uh, Arabia at this point in the conflict, and of course there were so many other battles in between that we have not mentioned here for the sake of, of being concise. Uh, the peninsula has come to witness the large and impressive sweep of uh, power in favor of the Muslims. And now the, those vanguard Sahaba, the forerunners, the very first who accepted Islam and suffered so much, started gradually to think about restoring their right to their homes, going back to Mecca and worship in Masjid al-Haram. This is something that we have not been able to do for so many years, six years now. And so Rasulullah uh, was shown in a dream that he will perform the Umrah, which is the smaller hajj, with the Sahaba, and they will enter the city and with full security. And so he mentioned this, and the Sahaba were so joyful that inshallah the time has come for us to be able to go back to our city, our homes in Mecca, and enter the Masjid al-Haram without fearing anyone and being able to worship inside the Masjid al-Haram. However, the Qurayshis have heard of this, and despite the consecutive failures at stopping this da'wah, they still insisted that this would not take place. They refused the idea of allowing the Prophet ﷺ and his followers to, to visit even for a short time to perform Umrah. They refused that. And so what happened uh, after a lengthy process of negotiations between the Qurayshis and the Prophet ﷺ, they finally agreed on a treaty of peace treaty between the two. And the elements of the treaty are such that the Muslims shall return this time, which means this year they will not perform Umrah. They are going to go back to Medina and will not enter. This is a concession that Rasulullah gave them. You see the short-sightedness of the Qurayshis. They wanted only to be seen as having weight and power. Rasulullah was looking beyond that. So they wanted that, so he gave it to them. He said, okay, we are not going to go this year. So based on that, they agreed on everything else. So, so the second point was that uh, when they come next year, they shall not come armed. And their arms shall be stored in positions and so forth. And war activities shall be suspended for 10 years. That they should not have any war or battle for 10 years and during this time both parties will live in full security and neither party will raise a sword against the other so that was the third point the fourth point which is very important is that if any from Quraysh goes to Muhammad which means any Qurayshi kafir who accept Islam and want to go to Rasulullah the Muslims will be obliged to return him to Quraysh and any Muslim who wants to leave Islam and accept to go back to Quraysh, the Quraysh will not return him to Muhammad. And Rasulullah was okay with this. He accepted that. Muslims were furious. They said, how do you accept this? And of course, the wisdom is that there will be no Muslims after knowing Islam who want to go back to Quraysh. So there is no issue. And the Muslims who want to enter the fold of Islam they will have to be patient until Allah brings about an opening. They will have to suffer in the Quraysh just like everybody else has suffered. So at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. It sounded to be defeating and it sounded to be dishonorable, but in reality, Rasulullah didn't see much in this, so he accepted it. The last one is the major one, and that is if a tribe wants to join the Qurayshis, they shall do so. And if a tribe wants to join Muhammad وسلم, they are allowed to do so. Now these are tribes, not individuals. And if 
any tribe that joins Quraysh attacks the tribes that join Muhammad, it will vanish this treaty. Which means Quraysh has to take care of any tribe that joins their fold, that they shall not attack a tribe that joins Muhammad, and vice versa. And so this was a major one because this is really the one that led to the Fath of Mecca, to the conquest of Mecca. And so there were a series of events that happened after that that really confirmed the profound wisdom of Rasulullah and the great results of the peace treaty, which Allah, in fact, in Surah Al Fath, called a manifest victory. This treaty was a manifest victory in Quranic terms. And the reason for that is that Quraysh has, for the first time, recognized Muslims and Rasulullah as a separate and dependent entity that they have to deal with. This is the first time they did that. And so Allah Azza wa Jal named this as a, a manifest victory. Fathan Mubina. Hudaybiyah was called in Surah Al Fath. Fathan Mubina. Inna fatahna laka Fathan Mubina. I'll move to the conquest of Mecca, which took place in the year 8 after Hijrah. And the reason for it, uh, before that, Ibn al Qayyim, rahimahullah, who is a major scholar of Islam, described the conquest of Mecca as the greatest conquest by which Allah Azza wa Jal has honored his messenger, has honored his religion, his soldiers, and uh, the party of truth. Uh, it provided an ever shining face and a most glowing source of inspiration to the entire earth. This is how Ibn al-Qiyam described the conquest of Mecca in his book uh, Zad al-Ma'ad. Uh, as we saw, the reason for this march on Mecca was as follows. As we said, according to the terms of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the Arab tribes had the option to join either Quraysh or join Rasulullah wasallam. And based on that treaty, one tribe, Banu Bakr, decided to join Quraysh, and another tribe called Khuza'a decided to join Muhammad wasallam. They were not Muslims, but they just decided to ally with Muhammad But hostilities broke between Khuza'a and Bani Bakr due to things that are not related to Islam. But the problem is that Quraysh supported Bani Bakr with arms and men in their fight against Khuza'a. And this was total violation of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. In fact, Khuza'a fled to Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. They sought refuge in Masjid Al-Haram, and men from Quraysh went with Bani Bakr and killed these people of Khuza'a inside Al-Haram. And so when the news reached Rasulullah this was a clear violation of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. And so Quraysh did not keep its word and has uh, breached the treaty. Uh, of course, Quraysh realized their grave mistake and they dispatched Abu Sufyan to Medina. They sent their leader, Abu Sufyan, to Medina to give the excuses to the Prophet ﷺ and seek to uh, re renew the treaty. Rasulullah did not listen to him. He went to all the Sahaba, they did not listen to him. And so he kept trying to, uh, to cook up something to prevent the massive invasion that is coming. Because they knew they were at fault. But he left back to Mecca empty-handed. And Rasulullah in total secrecy, he prepared his march toward Mecca. As Sufyan was negotiating in Medina, Rasulullah was preparing his march toward Mecca. There is nothing that works with these people. 